as you can tell, it's a little frosty out here this morning. It's about uh, 30 degrees at the moment. And that'd be maybe minus one, minus two in Celsius if you're not familiar with Fahrenheit. But this morning, I want to do something different. And so, let's get started. All right, folks, well, did I fool you? <laughs> well, if I told you, I kind of fooled myself too. Originally, I had planned to use Becky the Brinkman. But then I had second thoughts because of the process that I'm wanting to use here. And basically, I'm wanting to cold smoke something this morning, or maybe warm smoke something this morning, today. So I got to thinking about that, and I can put a small fire here in Betty Lou. And Betty Lou's been needing some love anyhow. It's been months since I've used her. I think if I could put a small fire in Betty Lou, then I think I can keep the temperature down easier than in Becky the Brinkman, which is a much smaller smoker. So I think due to the area involved in Betty Lou, it'll be much easier to keep a small fire going and keeping the temperature down in the smoker, but still getting the smoke that I'm looking for. It's time to get a fire start. For those of you who may not be familiar, let me introduce you to Betty Lou. This is the 250 gal or 275 gallon fuel oil smoker that I built. And you can find a link to the playlist where I have 18 videos of myself building this smoker. And so, without further ado, we are gonna get a fire started in Betty Lou here. But as you can see, she is a much bigger smoker. And with that area inside there, I think it's gonna be easier to keep a cool temperature inside that smoker versus Becky the Brinkman over there, which is maybe a 25 gallon, maybe 30 gallon smoker at the best. All right, so let's get turned around. Let's do this. Oh, careful where you point that thing. This uh, weed burner has quickly become my fire starter of choice. Oh, for those of you who don't know, this is the first time ever that I have put charcoal into this smoker. I almost find it sacrilegious, but today, in order to help keep a small fire, I think I need to use charcoal to help keep the wood going because I'm not going to have a big pile of wood going in here. So let's see how we're going to accomplish this. Okay, so just like that, I'm pretty sure I got a fire going here. We're gonna keep an eye on it for the next several minutes. It's now very obvious that we have a fire going in here. And this is really kind of the way I wanna keep it. Right here about this size, the entire time of this smoke. Just as long as I'm putting smoke into the smoker, I'm not gonna worry so much about how hot it gets. And I'm gonna take you over here and I'm gonna show you exactly what it is we're gonna be smoking today. I think you'll find it interesting. All right, folks, so what we are going to smoke today is going to be salt and pepper. Now, and the black pepper there, I almost had to destroy the grinder top that goes on to that pepper bottle. And that is what's known as, uh, they call it Malabar black pepper, which I have never heard of. Maybe I need to do some research. And over here, we have some Mediterranean sea salt that we're gonna put into these pans, these foil pans that I've constructed and we're going to set those up into the smoker. Now I'm not worried as far as temperature wise is concerned on the smoker with the salt, but the uh, pepper over here, kind of a different story. I don't want to really roast or toast these peppers and have them sit for a long period. I think the better option would be to roast or toast them in a pan right prior to using if that's what I wanted to do. So at any rate, I'm going to get these taken out, out of the bottles, put into the pans, and here in a few minutes we're going to get them put onto the smoker. Now I'll, I'll worry about spreading these once I get them into the smoker and get them settled into their place. But basically I want a single layer of all these peppercorns so that everybody can get some smoke. I think these foil pans will allow me to kind of construct a funnel 
and put them back into the bottles here after a while. Now it says this is Mediterranean sea salt. Do I have any way of proving that it is? No, I do not. But so I just have to take them at their word. And they said this Mediterranean sea salt is a fine gourmet salt with a mild flavor and it's selected for its purity and beautiful crystal white appearance. Add it to your all your favorite dishes. Well, by the time we get done smoking, hopefully it's not going to be a pure white substance any longer. There we go. All right, I'm gonna tend this fire a little bit and here shortly it'll be time to put these things on. Okay, so we got a little smoke coming out of our smoker now. So let's do this. Gently. Okay, so I'm gonna lay that up in here. Kind of spread this out the best I can. Now I've got my digital thermometer that reads the temperature. It's going to read the temperature of only the inside of the smoker. Because I just haven't figured out how to uh, monitor the internal temperature of a peppercorn yet. Okay, there we go. Now I'm going to be judging how much smoke these have gotten based upon the coloring of the salt. The deeper the coloring of the salt, the more smoke that obviously the pepper will have gotten as well. All right, so I'm gonna leave this for at least four hours. And other than checking the fire, I'm not gonna do anything with it. One final note before we go into uh, super time lapse here. It's gonna be my goal to keep the temperature of the smoker uh, 200 degrees or below. We'll see how we manage on that. And if you'd like to see a video on this remote thermometer, you can find that up in the right hand corner. Take a look. Alright folks, well, it's been four hours. I don't know if you can see this. I hope you can. There's definitely some color being taken on by this salt, which is exactly what I'm looking for. I just want to kind of give it a stir around here to expose some different areas of the salt. Maybe it would work better if I had some sort of screen to put it on. <coughs> hmm. Just to say, let's get a nose full of smoke here. I don't want to roll these around either. Just to kind of expose some different areas. I'm gonna go I'll leave it. <laughs> I think I'm gonna leave these on for at least another four hours. Something I want to mention is that I have been able to very easily keep these or keep this smoker at a reasonable temperature as far as not too hot. In fact, for the most part, it's been staying under 150 degrees. Exactly what I'm looking for. Okay, folks. Well, it's not gonna be too long before I lose my light out here to continue recording. And I just wanted to show you here before I, just, I hope you can see. It's not as bright as it was the first time. But there is still a difference in the color of this salt. In about seven and a half hours or so now, but it's been smoking here. And it definitely has a smoky appearance to it. Yeah. Sometimes.
times recording is tough when you got your head stuck inside a smoker. Now it's very difficult to see how much smoke has been put on these pepper corns. So I'm gonna leave them on here. I don't know, maybe another hour. Figure as long as I got sun, I'll keep them smoking. And uh, so I'm gonna lose them. I, I, I'm gonna lose my ability to record because of the sun going down here. One pretty soon. So I want to finish this video out. I will be putting them back into the bottles that they came in. I do have a plan for at least part of this. That's going to be the next video. Alright folks, well if you've made it this far through the, the uh, video, I definitely appreciate you being here. If you've never met her before, back here, you've had a chance to meet Betty Lou. And so, maybe you learned something today. I learned something today. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and let the cat out of the bag. Now what I'm planning on doing with this smoked salt and pepper is making cache e pepe. And it is a spaghetti dish. Some people call it Italian macaroni and cheese. Well, it has five ingredients in it. It has water, spaghetti, salt, pepper, and cheese. And that's it. So I was looking for a way to make this cache e pepe something of my own. Well, it's very difficult to do that when you've only got five ingredients to work with. So by smoking the ingredients, now I'll be able to make this my own. Folks, do me a favor. Down here in the bottom right hand corner, if you like what you're seeing, hit like and subscribe. And stay tuned, because there's always more to come. And thanks for watching.